Okay, quick demo today, and maybe a little lesson as well. What we're going to do is we're going to talk quickly about net ionic equations, and I'm going to show you guys a couple of double replacement precipitation reactions. So we have sodium iodide in solution and lead to nitrate in solution. I place some sodium iodide in this beaker, and we're going to react sodium iodide. AQ means it's dissolved in water, which you can see it is. And lead to nitrate, AQ, dissolved in water, voila, there it is. And I claim when they react together, I'll form sodium nitrate, which should stay in solution, and lead to iodide, solid, so a precipitate will form. Now I know that's going to be a solid based upon my solubility rules, which you guys should have learned by now. So let's go ahead. Here's my beaker of sodium iodide. We'll get a little aerial view here. I think it looks sort of cool to watch it this way. And we'll put a drop in there. And it's sort of fun to see that nice yellow precipitate spread out in the beaker. So that's lead to nitrate reacting with sodium iodide. So let's take a look. Maybe we'll see a side view here. See if that looks even more fun. Nice pretty precipitate forming there. Okay. Now what I've also done for you is I wrote the ionic reaction where we have two sodium ions and two iodide ions dissociated, a lead ion and two nitrates dissociated. That's what AQ means again, those ions dissociate in water. Uh, the sodium and nitrates stay dissociated. They are, not, uh, they are soluble in water, and the PBI2 sticks together. It is insoluble in water, so it's a solid. Now I'm going to cross off the spectators for you real quick and we'll have what we call a net ionic. So I have two sodiums on both sides, so they're gone. And what are the other spectators? Do you guys see them? That's right, the two nitrates, they're gone. So we have the lead ions and the iodide ions remaining, along with PBI2 solid. And so we call whatever's left the net ionic. Do you like that? Do another one real quick for you. So we're gonna take sodium carbonate and calcium chloride and we're going to form sodium chloride and calcium carbonate. Another cute little double replacement reaction. So here I have some sodium carbonate that's been dissolved. It's in my beaker here. You can see that it's AQ. It dissolves very well in water. And my calcium chloride, which also is AQ. So we'll do the same thing. We'll do the side view first here, see if you guys like that better. Let's see here. Put a couple drops in. And this one's not nearly as pronounced or as pretty as the other. Put a little bit more in there, and you can see it's a it start off a little gelatinous precipitate there. Let's take a look. We'll put some more in there, and now we'll go from up above, and you can see the nice precipitate that's formed. And that precipitate is my calcium carbonate. Now, calcium carbonate, of course, is just chalk dust. So if I swirl that around, I'll let that settle out for a while and you'd end up with a white powdery layer on the bottom and then of course the aqueous layer up above. So uh, we can write the ionic equation. Two sodiums and my carbonate are dissociated from each other. A calcium and two chlorides are dissociated from one another and I form two sodiums and two chlorides dissociated from one another and a calcium carbonate that sticks together. It's insoluble. So let's cross off our spectators again and it looks like sodium is the same on both sides. And what else is the same? Good job. The two chlorides are the same on both sides. The calcium and carbonates are stuck together on the other side. So we write what's up, whatever's left over. And you'll notice I like to write the positive ion first, just out of habit. And then my negative ion with my solid afterwards. So that's how you write molecular ionic and net ionic equations, and these are both for nice little precipitation reactions. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.